So this hook in here is going to be part of the React 19 release. Let me tell you more about this hook and how it can make your UI super intuitive. So a couple of days ago, the React dev team in here released a new blog post for the React Labs, like what they have been working on. And this was like released on February 15, 2024. Basically, it just highlights everything they've been working on, what is on the Canary release, and what's going to be on React, potentially React 19. And they have actually a really cool new React conference coming up on May 15 and 16 in Henderson, Nevada. So for those of you who doesn't know, that is a really nice tool. So they have actually a couple of stuff like the React compiler working on in here is something really cool. They have um, like server actions and you have this seen before it on, you know, Next.js and a bunch of places. And um, here the new features are actually inside of Canary already. So like what that means is us as users, we can just go ahead and install the Canary release in here, which is the unstable release or basically the next release in here. And we can just try out these versions from something like this, you know, using like, for example, the use client, there is the use client there, the use server, there is um, document metadata with like title, meta, so it can, can replace libraries like React helmets, potentially, there is um, asset load in here with script link and style. And what I'm super excited about is actually the action section in here for having a new form component with an action property or prop. And there's a bunch of hooks in here coming up. And the most interesting hook for me in here that I've been playing around with it, and it looks really, really optimistic. And by the way, it's called use optimistic right over here. So if you head over to here with like the reference or the documentation for the use optimistic hook in here, we're going to find a pretty simple explanation of what it does and how it works. So it's simple in here, it takes a state and it takes an update function and it returns like a function that allows you to add optimistic, like to add into this state in here, and it returns the new state that you actually, you know, did the updates on, or basically the newly updated state. I mean, you can go actually read through the whole documentation here. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I have a very special example to actually showcase how it works and when you do actually need it and when you don't need it. So I've got this simple React application in here or React component to be more specific, where you can, you know, have users chat, like a user chat sort of component where you can just type anything in this input, click send in here, and it sends to the user. Just simple as that. So you can imagine this like WhatsApp or Telegram or anything web based chat sort of application, the normal stuff. So usually in here, when you do that, so for example, I can do hey there, click enter, it gets sent. But if you notice one teeny tiny thing in here, you see this dot, it was like an empty dot. Now it's actually like full dot. This one in here, if you zoom in a little bit, if I hover over this, as you in here, it says it's sent, the title of this is sent. But for instance, if I try to do something else like hello, as you in here, if I hover over this and I go to here, it's gonna say sending, then immediately changes to send. I don't know if you can see that, but this just basically indicates whether the message is sending or sent. And of course, it's actually basically related to the API call. So like when we you know, send a message, it has to go through HTTP and send it to the API or the database to save it. So it has to do that process. So before it becomes, you know, sent, it has to go through that, the sending process. And that's when we indicate whether it's still sending or send. So because of this feature in here, if you just were to do it manually, just going to make the component super duper complicated. But if we use the new use optimistic hook, this is going to make it super, super easy and super straightforward. And it's going to make our lives of React developers is super easy. So let's try to understand exactly what's going on inside of that component. So for example, in here, I've got a you normal use state to keep track of all the messages. That's simple. I've got a form ref in here. That's another simple thing. That's our use optimistic thing. I'm going to get back to this in a second. And down here, I've got a function in here. This function is going to be responsible for sending a message. Like when the user hits send, this function in here or this method is going to be responsible for sending a message over the API to our backend server to save it on the database. So you see this send new message in here. This is actually going to be like a promise because we're using await. So this will take care of like sending that through the HTTP. And of course, right after this method is being called and successfully returned in here, we know that, oh, the messages sent, we're good to go. So we're actually ready to go ahead and call the set messages method in here to basically just, you know, update the state of the set messages in here with a new message and particularly set sending to be false. Now our actually form action here is actually the most crucial part. So this form action is going to be called 
from right below in here inside of the form. So if you notice the form in here, if you go to the form, you have action, form action. So like whenever we hit the submit button right in here, because it has a type of submit. So this one will automatically be sent and this form action will be automatically triggered with the actual form data. And the form data in here is just going to have the message we have down here. So simple enough. So here for the message, we simply have like, you know, the message in here, if it's empty, or we trim it, we find like undefined or anything, we just simply return. Otherwise, we first make sure to first write over here, like call the add optimistic message and pass it in the message. And this will like temporarily optimistically update the state and show an immediate feedback to the user that Oh, there you go. This is actually your message we will just like show it immediately for the user without actually waiting for the whole request or the API request to go through and come back from the server. So we can show the message, for example, that could take two or three seconds, we don't want the user to actually wait three seconds to see his message appearing on the screen. We don't want that. So what we want is actually to show him a message, maybe add something like an empty dot to indicate that message is currently being sent or sending in progress, but we still show them the message. And after the message is sent and successfully gone through and everything, we can just change that to like an, you know, full circle or something like that to indicate the message is successfully sent, and we're good to go. So we call the optimistic message or add optimistic message in here first, second, we reset the form in here to make sure the form import is empty. So we clear it out. And last but not least in here, we call the API request in here to send the message through the API. So this is basically what it is so away send message, we'll go ahead and send that through the API. All right, so like, what does that even mean? Like, when we do call this add optimistic message, what does exactly happen? So if you look into the use optimistic, it's pretty straightforward, and it's pretty simple, it might look a little complicated, but it's actually very, very simple once you actually get your head around of how it works. So first in here, it takes the first parameter is the actual state that you want to manage. In our case in here is actually the message state. So like the state right over here that we actually want to use for optimistic tracking. So this is actually the state. The second one is this function that's going to be called whenever we call this add optimistic message sort of method. So whenever this one is called, this is the function that's actually going to run or particularly callback that's going to be running. So it has the previous state, which is the messages in here, and it has the new message that we know we pass in as a parameter in here. Then we simply merge so like we return the previous state in here, which means we return the previous messages, and we return the new object, like we add the new message into the state in here, with text to be the new message sending to be true, because sending is still in progress. And you can add whatever you want, like other properties, for example, from the user from like recipients or any of that. So like just, you know, meta DS stuff. So now at optimistic, when we go down here and pass in the image, we'll just go ahead and do the process and actually update that and put everything like the new state that's going to be updated, it's going to be inside of these optimistic messages. So there are all the optimistic messages in here, we can down here, just go do optimistic messages map and we can render all of our messages. Now, you're probably wondering, like, we're not rendering the actual messages in here. So how does optimistic messages can kind of like get along with the messages? Like, of course, this is just temporary, right? Right? So that's actually where the magic happens is actually use optimistic will automatically update when our, you know, main state in here, the messages state changes with the new stuff. So like when that one changes, this will automatically update this optimistic messages in here will be automatically set to messages once this one is updated and ready to go. So we don't have to do anything other than that, just like use this op use or optimistic messages sort of variable or state, just put it in here and just completely forget about it. So I've went through in here, put a console log for optimistic messages state in here just to check it out when we go and play around with the UI. So for example, in here, if I go to the UI, so first, I'm going to just send us this simple message, you're going to have, hey, now it's sending optimistic has only one state. And as you in here, immediately later on, he updates like two states, then he immediately falls back to only one state because he realizes, oh, that's actually basically the same thing. So here it was having sending as true, right over here, sending is true, then later on, once everything is updated, and the message is sent through the API, sending now is actually false. And imagine this is actually just the use optimistic. So everything is being handled between, you know, the optimistic state and our original messages and literally using use optimistic in here can actually save you a lot of headache. It's gonna actually spare a lot of manual work and jargon that you don't actually need to do anymore. And just gonna make your code super clean and super straightforward. Plus, the state in here is pretty straightforward as well. 
So to see the actual benefit of use optimistic hook, I went through actually built another component I called the old user chat, which takes care of like, you know, doing the same component that we have right now, the same functionality, the old way, like without using use optimistic and doing everything manually. So for that sake, you have to do just basically define two states, one optimistic messages state, just like, you know, just temporary state in here in the actual messages state. Then you, here, when you send a message, you can't just like send a message and you know, wait for the state to update or magically, you have to go ahead and call the set optimistic messages in here again, and literally go through all the messages in here, find it, and you have to introduce a new variable called ID. So you could identify each message by itself and actually update that particular message once it sends. So you have to do ID and you return the new message in here. And down here, you have to also do set optimistic and you know, put all of that randomly generate another ID, maybe a string or a number, just one of the simple 16 bit integer number in here. So screws in here just like makes it a little more complicated and you have to do a lot of stuff. But with a new hook, that makes it super, super easy. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned for other hooks. I'm going to explore a lot more hooks in React. So make sure to subscribe, push that like button and stay tuned for that.